Watch Transit TV right now. I'm Tochi Kumakel. Keep watching Transit TV. Great. Thank you. Kalum Hudson Odoi as well. Kalum Hudson Odoi, his trademark, uh, you know, his trademark finish in the the calling effort that he's always scoring. When he was at Chelsea, he was always trying those things and he wasn't working. I, I just knew that one day this thing would start working because he was never giving up on it. He kept on trying and kept on trying. Now we are seeing him scoring week in, week out with, uh, you know, calling efforts for Nottingham Forest. And you look at the team overall, I think one of the players that has impressed me the most for Nottingham Forest is uh, Ola Aina. I know, Ola yeah. Aina. Chelsea had what I would call their reality check this weekend. You know, they've been free scoring and a lot of their fans have been in their euphoria thinking that the team has arrived. In fact, I had one of their play one of their fans come to the come to the studio last week when I did the I don't know if you have seen the video, the Let's Talk show that we do once a week. It was all about Chelsea. Yeah. And the guy said that the Chelsea probably will win in my win will win the league or at least top four. So I asked him, Do you think they're gonna displace Liverpool and Arsenal? He said yes. He they continued the well. I said, okay, well, we'll see. But meanwhile, the same guy asked him about leadership and other things, which I will go get into. So saying on the game against Nottingham Forest, Chelsea came into this game. They were dominant the first half as usual, and uh, somehow they could not score their goals. And second half considered early in the second half, and we had a lot of uh, talking points and flashpoints that happened in that game, which we get, we're going to get into now. But let me ask you one question. So one thing I observe about Chelsea, I don't know if you have observed that if I'm right, you let me know, is that Chelsea don't have, you mentioned system, when we were talking about Wisa. Chelsea don't have an attacking system. They don't build up. Besides, like, like you know, how you see Liverpool, how you see Arsenal, how you see Manchester City, they have a pattern of build up. Chelsea lose, it's more of a team that picks up the ball, either Pama is running on the def defense, or Jackson is running away with the ball, or uh, non Madeke is doing something you know individually brilliant. They have a lot of players, quality players going forward. But in terms of a team, I don't think uh, they have a pattern of play yet. I don't know if you agree with me on that. Um, okay, um, I wouldn't say I so much agree, but at the same time, I do not disagree. So I think at this particular time, I would be on the fence um, because I, it, I think it's a blend of both. It's a mixture of both. You know, Chelsea uh, have um, a bunch of talent in the squad both the starting team and the ones on the bench, they are all talented players. Mm -hmm. I think I have to, you know, give kudos to the Chelsea recruitment team for, you know, having put together the squad they have. Exactly. So Chelsea and Chelsea fans in particular should actually know that Chelsea hasn't arrived. Chelsea is a work in progress. And whatever flashes of brilliance they are seeing right now is just, uh, you know, flashes of what is to come. It is not here yet. Done. Now, Chelsea is built up to, to goals. I think, you know, Basically, they know the quality they have in the squad. They know the quality of Kopama. They know the quality of Nani Madeke. They know the quality of Nico Jackson, who, you know, believe me, I think Nico Jackson is a great player. He's it's just that he has not found his finishing boots yet. So imagine when Victor, uh, when uh, Jackson, Nico Jackson finds his finishing boots and he adds that to his game. He's going to be a tremendous player. But until then, well, let's still address him as a player, as a player you know, in the... Um, uh, do I call him uh, a mid player that he, he is? I will call him mid. Yes, because that's what he is right now. Once he starts scoring those, he starts bearing those chances, he's always missing. Then he goes up and past being mid. But Nico is actually, you know, a strong player and his teammates know his quality. So I think what Chelsea really does is, you know, just get the ball and push it to the attackers. They all have quality. They have the ability to beat their man one on one and then, um, you know, lay it off for anyone who is available. But the problem I have with Chelsea most of the times is that in front of goal, they all want to be the scorer. Exactly. Everybody wants to be the star boy of the team. You know, Cole Palmer, he sets up his teammates. But some other times, you know, just being a young player, he still wants to be the man of the day. Mm -hmm. The man of the day because, I mean, you cannot talk about Chelsea without talking about Cole Palmer. And then Noni Madueke, knowing fully well that Cole Palmer is always taking the shine. In front of goal, Noni Madueke wants to get the goal. I think he's the biggest culprit there. Noni Madueke, once he has seen the post, he knows, yo, I'm taking this shot because I need to be on the score sheet as well. It doesn't always have to be Kopama. I mean, and um, Nico Jackson, most of the time, is always laying the ball for Kopama. I think that one is also down to, to you know, down to, you know, um, what, is that, what I mentioned about Kai Havertz. Confidence. Sometimes in front of goal, 
Nico Jackson is not so confident with himself that he can score the goal. Then he looks and he sees Palmer coming. He lays it off for Palmer. I know a lot of people will not agree with this, but I think that first goal, you know, uh, that, their first goal against Brighton, the first goal Palmer scored against Brighton was because Jackson was not confident with himself that he could score that goal, so he laid it off for Palmer. Yeah. Now, but that is not a problem. That is not a problem. That is live, you know. That is a reality check. That is live, or you know, um, how do they, how do I how do I explain it? I say. Uh, self, uh, I think he knows himself. Yeah, self-assessment. Yes, you assess yourself. You know, okay, I cannot do this. The team is more important. Then instead of taking the risk to lay it off for your teammate, at the end of the day, it is the team who wins. It is not a player that wins. Exactly. So, for I think Chelsea, basically, with time, they will get good. Their build-up might not be the best. Their 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 play might not be the best. But Enzo Maresca, he has come in and he has instilled some, you know, maturity in the boys. And it was always going to be this way because the boys matured a little bit with uh, Mauricio Pochettino. He did. Mauricio Pochettino did a great job at Chelsea. I think that what Chelsea fans are enjoying right now is the good work of Mauricio Pochettino. And then I, Enzo Maresca. It's good you mentioned. I was going to ask you that, but there's a, there's a, a skill of thought that the guy also mentioned that that, that Maresca has not done anything anything for Chelsea yet. That as far as that no, concerned, no, no, I feel that what he has done. That's the only big thing he has done is to train the squad and say, this is the players I want. You know, make it easier for himself to work with this set of players. But in terms of a philosophy or pattern of play, that Chelsea are still waiting to see what is offered to them. I don't know if you, you know... You no, know. I think I think I will have to disagree with that. Even though I mentioned that what we see with Chelsea is a good work of Mauricio Pochettino because you cannot take away uh, one before you count two. Exactly. If you want to count two, you have to count one first. And Mauricio Pochettino was the one who started this rebuilding of this squad. If we want to trace it so, so back, we can call the likes of um, um, Potter. Potter and also the likes of Lampard and so others. But then, I don't want to go that far. Let's just start it from last season when Mauricio Pochettino began to pick up the momentum for the, the squad and they ended the season. season on a high. They ended the season on a high and then Enzo Maresca mm -hmm. comes in and he takes uh, the team up. Now, I think Enzo Maresca has instilled his own philosophy into the squad and he has, known, he has now made them understand that to win games, you have to be up there you have to attack the defensive line. You have to hold the position. You have to, you know, he has brought in a different philosophy to the squad. But has the, the philosophy been well assimilated into the players? No. I do not think they have now, they have fully assimilated that philosophy. So it, I think it's just a matter of time. Just like Pep Guardiola said when he was talking, sorry, when he was talking about Enzo Maresca and he said, if Chelsea give Enzo Maresca the time. They will definitely enjoy what Enzo Maresca has to offer. And I, I think I agree with him on that. Enzo Maresca has come in with his philosophy, you know, with, with the brain, everything he has learned from Pep Guardiola. You cannot be an apprentice of Pep Guardiola and not learn anything. So Enzo Maresca, having learned from Pep Guardiola, he has come into Chelsea. He has brought that winning mentality. That winning mentality was not so much there in Chelsea's squad last season because at the point last season, I think it was more about the Chelsea players wanting to enjoy themselves more than they wanted to win. But this season, we are seeing Chelsea hungry to win the game. When they go a goal down, they are fighting to see if they will get the equaliser. Last season, we saw Chelsea go down most times and they never had any reply. But this season, Chelsea goes down or Chelsea's goal is equalised. You see them still pushing and attacking and attacking. So, yesterday's game, you like you mentioned earlier, it's a reality check for Chelsea. It is just uh, the moment they hit themselves on the back and say, okay, we have not arrived there yet, so we need to do more work. Yeah, and, and, and the, the, yeah, let's not focus more on the, I mean, Nottingham Forest is a, a team, another interesting team as well to look at in the EPL. The, this is, remember, they beat uh, Liverpool 1-0, and in that game, yeah. uh, it, it was Alanga and uh, uh, Hosnod Doyle show. It, they put pound uh, pressure upon pressure on Liverpool uh, fullbacks. Uh, Hudson on the left side, Elanga on the right side. So when that the team just came out from this for this game, uh, Elanga was on the bench. I was like, oh, what's going on here? You know. But you know, you know, uh, Espirito Santo is a very tactical, especially the defensive side of things coach. So you yeah. always know that he's going to make his teams difficult to beat. Yes, Chelsea was a little bit uh, on them the first, but the second half it became a contest. Even after they lost. Uh, uh, just what pros to the second year look at it just couldn't still break them down so what, what have you made of uh, Nottingham Forest this season and especially in this game what did they do to make make it difficult for Chelsea to, you know 
Do you know, Nottingham Forest is actually another team. I thought they would struggle, uh, but they, they will struggle this season with the relegation battles. Remember last season, they struggled a bit, but not so much of a struggle. If you remember that, uh, what part of the reason they struggle was because they had some points deduction. But well, then, uh, coming into this season, we are now understanding why Nottingham Forest recruited about 20 players two seasons ago. Because they knew they were coming up to the Premier League and there was no way they would want to go down that particular season. So they went ahead to recruit a lot of players. Some of them have left now, and there's some of them still in the squad. But I think generally, Nottingham Forest is just, um, you know, they are a team that has the quality. Not so much of, a, you know, high quality. You cannot say there is a world-class player in Nottingham Forest, but you can say that there is, um, you know, above, uh, there are above average players. And the players are developing as well. Like Elanga, Elanga wasn't this good when he was in United. Yes. Above, above average players at Nottingham Forest as well. So talking about Elanga, Elanga, you know, he came out of the Manchester United Academy. He was good in a few games. But then we all saw that, okay, he's not that matured. Eventually, he left Manchester United. And since he's been at Nottingham Forest, I think he's been growing. Callum Hudson Odoi as well. Callum Hudson Odoi, his trademark, uh, you know, his trademark finishing, the, the calling efforts that he's always scoring. When he was at Chelsea, he was always trying those things and he wasn't working. I, I just knew that one day this thing will start working because he was never giving up on it. He kept on trying and kept on trying. Now we are seeing him scoring week in, week out with, uh, you know, calling efforts for Nottingham Forest. And you look at the team overall, I think one of the players that has impressed me the most for Nottingham Forest is uh, Ola Aina. I know, Ola yeah. Aina, no, since Nigerian last season, I've always been impressed with him, yes. Yes, there is no way I can talk about Nottingham Forest without mentioning Ola Aina and how consistent he has been for Nottingham Forest. And overall, Nottingham Forest, uh, they've actually made a huge, huge progress. And this is their current goalkeeper, uh, Cell. Cell seems to be a, a top-class goalkeeper as well. Not a world-class, but above average. So I think generally, Nottingham Forest, you know, every team would find it hard to, be, to break down Nottingham Forest. Nottingham Forest is not the kind of team you go to, uh, you know, you play against and you're beating them 5-0, you're beating them 8-0, unless it is a, their off day, you know. There are, there are always days you come, at, come to work and this day is not your day. So probably a day where how Nottingham Forest is having that kind of day, that's the day they can lose 4 or 5 in a ball. Again, unless that, Nottingham Forest will always take the game to any team. So I think uh, Nottingham Forest is a, is a team that everyone yeah. should also watch out for. Yeah, exactly. And the good thing about them, they have this whip on in Gosson Odoi and uh, Elanga with a lot of pace and quality as well. You know, some players have just yeah. have the pace like uh, Traore, but they don't have the quality. But Elanga... Let's also, not, the... let's also not forget Chris Wood. Chris Wood, yeah, yeah, exactly. The, the traditional yeah. striker, he has been, he's been in EPL for, for God knows how, how long. So if you give them yeah. the chance, they will take it. You know, so that's the, the thing about that. They will defend, defend deep. But if they, if they get a chance, they will take that chance. So it's, it's difficult to play against teams like that. And like you said, teams need to need to watch out for the time for us this season. It's really going to cost a lot of harm. Liverpool have already, already tested it. And I think that's, that's a warning for Arsenal City and uh, uh, teams like Aston Villa going into the season. Now for us to finish uh, on this one before we move to the next game. Uh, the, the last person I'm going to ask you is on Chelsea and their goalkeeping position. I think before this is started, they had about six or seven goalkeepers in their books and they ended up having Sanchez as their number one. I don't think, what have you made about that? Point? What do you think Chelsea needs to do? Because it looks like even if though, they, though Chelsea's defense is not as good as the top three teams, but they can still do a job. But sometimes the goalkeeper just gives away some goals that... Yeah. Uh, you don't expect at this level. Mm. You know, what I think is, uh, I think um, uh, Robert Sanchez is a, is a great shot stopper, but he's not, generally, he's not a great goalkeeper. You know, when I say generally, I mean uh, goalkeepers, they yeah, have of a course, lot of everything you have to put together before you can become a top-class goalkeeper. Uh, mm. It doesn't just end by, you know, throwing yourself into the air to catch balls or punch the balls away. Because uh, goalkeepers, we have seen these days, they join the team build-up. We also see goalkeepers defending like though they are center backs when uh, a team has a counter attack and the goalkeeper comes to sweep the ball. You know, you put all of these things together and you ask yourself, how much is uh, Robert Sanchez offering to Chelsea in that regard? And then the, the first thing that comes to your mind is, is this not the same Robert Sanchez who is always giving the ball away to opponents exactly. in every game? And, you know, he leaves the team, uh, um, you know, poor in confidence because it, it makes his defenders not trusting him to give him passes uh, anymore. But we still see the Chelsea defenders and the midfielders always giving him the passes because they want him to grow on his confidence. Because I think most times when we see these kind of things happen, it is always uh, down to the 
player's confidence, confidence. Man, when goalkeeper situation it's down to confidence because it is when a goalkeeper or a player is not so much confident in himself that he tends to give the ball away to opponents. But with Robert Sanchez, this has been a problem with him right from his days in Brighton and over Albion. He carried it from Brighton and then uh, somehow he fell out with um with the coach, the then coach Roberto De Zerbi, and De Zerbi dropped him to the bench and started using Jason Steele, and eventually they got to Alpha Brogan. Now he left Brighton and came to Chelsea. He still carried on the same problem. You know, sometimes uh, he would not, I wouldn't say sometimes, I think in every game, he averages two passes to the opponent in every game. Now, you you look at this. This is the problem. I remember the game last season when Chelsea big, were winning 2 0 against Arsenal. Chelsea were winning 2 0 against Arsenal. He passed the ball to Declan Rice and Declan Rice scored from about, about 40 yards. Yeah. And then the same, um, la the last season or this season, he passed to Brighton and they scored the second goal to Baleba and he scored the second goal. I mean, in so many other games, he has passed to opponents, but they did not score. Yeah, exactly. Now, if you look at it, when Mauricio Pochettino started his reign at Chelsea, Robert Sanchez was still his number one choice for goalkeeper. And then Sanchez somehow got injured, then came in George Petrovic. Petrovic. Petrovic came in and Petrovic was also not, was not doing those errors. He was not making those errors Robert Sanchez was making. But I think drop Petrovic and Sanchez when it comes to goalkeeping abilities. I think uh, Sanchez is a, little, is a little bit ahead of Petrovic. But then you look at Petrovic, he does not make those errors. So the defenders will be very confident playing around him and keep giving the ball to him. But one other thing that didn't write so well for Petrovic is that he does not, he's not so good with distributing the ball. Yeah. He's not so good with distributing yeah, the ball. Good. So so many other times he would lose the ball trying to distribute it. He plays it into goal kick, uh, throw, throw in, sorry, rather. He plays the ball into throw or, you know, he just boots the ball into the thin air and it's a 50-50 ball. But Sanchez, if he's not giving the ball away to the opponent, he is a better distributor of the ball. Earlier this season, we saw the goal that uh, Cole Palmer scored against Wolverhampton Wanderers. It was Sanchez who started the game when he, you know, yeah. played that long pass to Nico Jackson. Jackson led it to Cole Palmer and it was a goal. This is what Sanchez adds to the game. So I think Sanchez does need to, you know, it, I, I still think it is a confidence problem. He needs to stop asking himself questions because me, sometimes I play the game and I know that when I'm playing, anytime I'm not so confident with myself, I tend to lose the ball. And I think, you know, this is some one of the problems that these professional players face as well. You have the ball on your foot and you're asking yourself questions. What if I do not, what if I misplace this ball? What if I do not kick it? Well, once you begin to ask yourself those questions, you see yourself, you know, making those schoolboy errors. So well, I think Sanchez. I, I also, sorry to tell you, I also think maybe is it is it confidence or maybe sometimes concentration? To sometimes he gets the, just like when you had Ramsdale, he gets he distracted. Yes, yeah, he goes go for Arsenal. Good goalkeeper, yeah. he was good with his feet, but sometimes he, 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 I think he gets too emotional with what is happening yeah. in the stadium and does yeah. lose his concentration. You know, I think sometimes it might be concentration and not and not really confidence because he like like David Raya is good with his feet, but I see him many times. Play long balls because yes. they told you to play build up from, but also you to to sure you have to, yeah, exactly. yeah, sometimes he, he can go long if it's not safe to do so. So, I think sometimes yes. his lack is concentration, you have to be able to to evaluate what's going on around you and know the best yeah. route to take. So, and for his age, I hope he's still going to develop or just might have to find, yeah. You know, I think, I think they will still give him a few more chances to you know see if he gets it right. If he doesn't, Chelsea will definitely. Of uh, going to get another goalkeeper. I remember they already have another goalkeeper in the rank, uh, Felipe Jorgensen. He hasn't uh, so much uh, gotten a, a good chance. I mean, he hasn't made so much errors that led to a goal. But, you know, you look at him, you watch his game with Valencia. Sorry, not Valencia. I think that was very early last season. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, he's, he's a ball playing goalkeeper. But Sanchez, being in the Premier League for the past few years, is, you know, he understands the league better. So I understand yeah. why the coach is playing Sanchez ahead of Jorgensen. But Sanchez should be wary of his position because Jorgensen is there just waiting for his opportunity.